What's going on everybody? My name is C4 welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be seeing if we can make Tommy DeVito into a franchise quarterback. Can he be a guy that we can develop, that we can find a way to win with here in Madden and win a Super Bowl here with the New York Giants. Originally I was going to record a new realistic rebuild of the Chicago Bears but a little voice in my head said push that till Saturday because I, we need to do something. We need to capitalize on the hottest story in the NFL and I can say this as an Eagle fan usually things surrounding the Giants I don't get, they're lame, they're corny. I'm in on this guy, man. It's, it's an awesome story. I actually remember watching, I think it's because I remember watching him at college. And I was like, man, this guy, you know, he was, I'm pretty sure, man, he was a little bit of like a dual threat in college. Like he always put up some pretty extremely numbers. I don't think that's necessarily the case in the NFL so far. But I'm here for it. And I, you know, we did a challenge not too far off from this, where we took Josh Dobbs, who had a, you know, somewhat, somewhat I think he was a 63 normal, and he was 28, so he's a little bit older. We put him and the Minnesota Vikings were like, can we go on a run here? And we ended up making Josh Dobbs an MVP candidate. We won a Super Bowl. All was good. However, this is very, very different from that. We are obviously starting at a worse spot. God damn it, of course, he's a 25-year-old rookie. So we have that little bit of like, come year four, come year five. He's going to have really slow development. We don't have a Justin Jefferson. We don't have a Jordan Addison. We don't have a TJ Hawkinson. We do have a Saquon Barkley. And we do have a playbook here in New York. As far as the Sim is concerned... That's not brutal. It's also not amazing. So we may have to make adjustments there. Obviously, if this playbook is giving him like more picks and intercept, we might have to see if we can hire an offensive coordinator from a little bit more favorable playbook. We also are definitely going to be needing to look to hire a QB guru so that we can get plus three short, plus three mid, plus three deep, plus three throw power. He's going to need those. Like, obviously, that's my number one priority right now. Um, but for the rest of the team, it's, you know, the work in progress. There's a reason why, put it away, the quarterback and Daniel Jones is not solely the reason why the Giants have not been a good football team, right? Offensive line has not been nearly good. They don't have the kind of weapons at wide receiver defensively. It's just, it's, it's, I think honestly the defense is kind of starting to trend a little bit in the right direction. What I did for this defense for the sake of this rebuild is I took Isaiah Simmons, I moved him back to strong safety so that we could get Micah McFadden, who I thought had, he's had a little bit of a breakout this season. We'll play him alongside Bobby Okereke in the middle. Maybe he can get a dev trade. Just felt like diversifying the defense and just putting our best players uh, on the field as, as creatively as we had to to get them on the field. But obviously Simmons has been like a little bit of a hybrid player. I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal there. So all eyes are on Mr. Cutlets himself, Tommy DeVito. Uh, we're using the live updated roster, so we're starting here week 10. Um... Let's let's see what, what the hell we can do. Okay, first of all, do we have a coach in place that has QB Guru? Get out of here. Can I hire one right now that's on the open market? QB Guru. Okay, Carolina's playbook sucks. Uh, all right, well, I mean, for the, we'll, we'll at least get you for now. Playbook is the least of my concern right now. First step... We need to get some buffs to Mr. DeVito. So we're going to start here with short accuracy. We just got the fast points here. We don't need we don't need the, the hardest the hardest difficulty. It's not a realistic rebuild. We're going to go with fast skill points. So it's only 10 to work our way down this tree. And this is uh, 100%. If you're ever doing anything like this, just do this. It's the first step. It's the easiest boost that you can get. Hey, let's close out this first little burner here. So I think a long way of uh, the development of Tommy DeVito is going to be having Saquon Barkley there. Take the pressure off him. So we are, unlike the Giants, going to pay Saquon Barkley what he wants because he's so very clearly this offense. We also have Xavier McKinney. He's looking for a reasonable contract extension. Looking for Isaiah Simmons. Now move back to safety. I don't know if that makes him a little bit cheaper than if we would have kept him at linebacker, but I'm in. I'm in. To buy in on that one. Um, Isaiah Hodgins. There's some upside there, especially because he's a dev trait wide receiver on an offense that doesn't have a whole lot of dev trait wide receivers, if you know what I mean. Sterling Shepard, you could probably go. Paris Campbell, 70. I mean, he's 26. Two-year deal. I mean, he's not going to take this. He wants more money, right? Yeah. Okay. What about Adore Jackson, the second? He's looking for three. Keep him at least 30. Don't hate that. I also don't love it because you can draft corners. Super easily, but we'll come back to the table. We'll get Isaiah Simmons locked in as well. We got to negotiate with Tommy DeVito here. We'll bring in his super agent. Didn't like my original offer. They're they're holding us 
How about this? Five years, $10 million. Let's go shake on it. Close out the burner year with a little bit of momentum and the offense kind of how I expected it to go, which is a lot of Saquon Barkley, a lot of efficient run with Saquon Barkley. He's a top 10 rushing offense. Uh, take a look at the stats. So DeVito only started whatever he did. And uh, that is slightly worrying. Nine touchdowns, 14 picks. But we're trying to do something here with a 57 overall normal dev, 25-year-old rookie quarterback. There are going to be some ups and downs. So that's fine. Saquon played well. Not really enough time to figure out who's going to be our top wide receivers or anything like that. A Karaki, 130 tackles, three picks. Love that. Nine half sacks, 10 TFLs for Thibodeau. You like that. Solid season at a Dex Lawrence. And hey, Isaiah Simmons kind of thriving here, moving back to safety, two interceptions on the year. But we can't really dwell too much, man. A lot of work now needs to go to building an offense that can help elevate. I think he's, what is he, a 58 now? We spent all of the upgrades in our staff. So as it stands, at the end here of the 2023 season, he is got a nice plus three. He's a 61. Even though he's not really a 61, he's playing like a 61. According to this Madden, it says somehow the Steelers defeat the Eagles in the 2023 Super Bowl. Huh. Oh yeah, as we start our offseason, another thing that makes this more challenging what we did with Josh Dobbs and the Vikings is we also have this gigantic, disgusting contract that's hampering our ability to go out and spend big in free agency. God, what were they thinking paying this guy? The only good news is we did not get a very good role for free agency here. There's not, we don't have a lot of money. It's another year that we get closer to ridding this terrible Daniel Jones contract. So it's the only way that makes that somewhat tolerable is like, well, we only have 48 mil. I know there's not even 48 mil worth of upgrades. Like Damian Lewis is there, but he's 27. I could probably draft a guard that's better than that. We have Ruiz here, who again, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure, man, the Saints signed him to a contract extension. So I don't really want to sign him. So there's just, there's just nothing there. Everything, all the pressure on this offense to make the jump is coming through the draft, which not an awesome feeling, but we'll try our best. All right, so taking a look here at the draft as it relates year one. Now, we use the starting point of week 10, so that means you get the same draft. This is a draft that I was just like, I yeah, I guarantee it's that 6'9 wide receiver out of, I think he was Iowa. He's there. So we know that he's there. I don't want to just cheese it and draft. So I did scout here the other top wide receiver, Nick Parrish. It does look pretty interesting. I also started to scout some of the top guards. Uh, well, we had some good info here on because we need two new starting guards. That's a big get. And I really want to go offense as much as we can in this rebuild because we need so much help on the offensive side. So we got Campbell there. I did scout Bill Burbank, who has three Bs. We also have uh, Mitchell Callaway, two As, two Bs in the second, third round. It looks like he'd be pretty damn good. Uh, but I do think maybe best case, I want to see if we could trade out of the first round and uh, maybe acquire a future first-round pick. If I can get out of this and, and get a first next year and a second this year, I'm probably going to get rid of this first-round pick. We're able to find the Cleveland Browns. You offered me originally a second-round pick in Greg Emerson. I just don't need corner. I feel like he's optimistic about our current corner room. So I was like, I'm going to take him out, and can I get a 2025 first-round pick, please? And we're able to strike a deal there. So we have two first-round picks next year. We get a second round this year that can help us try to build up the offensive line here a little bit. I'm going to I'm gonna show good and great resistance to not just redraft that 6-9 wide out again. So the first pick of the second round jumped up a couple spots here, just even more so get ahead of the commanders. Don't want them picking whoever we would want to decide. Now, I was hoping there might have been like a sleeper wide receiver to that's not this guy, and unfortunately, that's that's all I'm seeing is just, and we, I don't want to redraft that guy already. So I think we just go to the trenches. Continue to build out the offensive line around uh, Mr. Cutlets. And I, I like, there's some good value here. I think Jackson with the double A is interesting. I think Bill Burbank, who we did scout. But those are those are third, fourth round guys that hopefully we can get with later picks. I think Mitchell Callaway is probably the best option here with a double A, double B, and the combine is pretty damn good. You wish there was a little bit more bench press, but elite agility, change of direction, good in everything else. What do you got to tackle? Just be sure. Because, I mean, you can always draft a tackle and then move someone like Evan Neal, who IRL is struggling. Maybe that's, maybe the move inside the guard is what you need to do to salvage an Evan Neal-type player. Um, I mean, is Burbank's combine better? Should we just get the best athlete at guard? 
even they're kind of kind of the same. There's no elites on the board. Ah, screw it. We'll get it. We'll get every couple everybody here. We'll get Mitch Callaway first. And then we're going to keep on rolling. Yes, sir. Rolls with a hidden dev trade. 87 strength, decent athlete, day one starter. I'm going to guess 74, 74 hidden dev. And then with our second, I mean, what this the D run block is kind of scary on this Jackson guy, but the double A sure as hell ain't. Like, and how what is a D? Like, what does that mean? He just have like high 60s and we can work that. I like Burbank as well. Hmm. Just build the trenches here. We'll go build Burbank. A little bit of a reach, but another dev trait lineman at plug and play. And with our final second round, I didn't know we had three second round picks. We need. In terms of like now, just like the biggest question mark is 3-4 defensive end because they just decided to trade. This must have been from the, the trade here, actually, with uh, Leonard Williams. We need a 3-4 defensive end. And, of course, there's not one here that screams, oh, yeah, that guy's going to be a baller. Uh, we do have, I mean, this guy's interesting. Hugh Hambrick, great name, 6 feet 260. Not the exact combo they want. Actually, you know, I don't. And I might need to come back and get that guy. But it's not what we're looking for. I think the best shot here might be Brandon Whitmore at D-Tackle. B block shed. A finesse move. C power. Combine's probably going to be pretty good. Elite speed. Sure. You're going to come play 3-4 defensive end for us. Would love to see a dev trait there. I want to give Michael McFadden a chance to develop. But this guy also looks too good to pass up on out of Florida. Joey Winters. B block shed. B tackle. B zone coverage. Runs a 4-5. Three cone. 20 yard shuttle. Exactly what I want to look for. Even though there's no dev trade, I think that's going to be a 70-plus base rating. I thought he was gone. Yes, sir. We're coming back for Mr. Hambrick. I like it. Why is there no dev on these guys? Come on. All right. So our first round pick this year was picking up another first round pick for a better draft class, which uh, I'm here for. We got Callaway, 73 hidden dev. Burbank, 72 hidden dev. Not bad. Look, winner, 75 normal. Hambrick's a 70. Whitmore, 71. But what happens when I move the defensive end? Might go up. Might go down, might stay the same. A little bit of a roulette. Let's go move him to right defensive end. Goes from 71, D tackle, to a. I always hate losing a rating. But we have two new starters, Hidden Dev on the offensive line. That is about as much as we could get, knowing that we had to avoid getting the freaking 6 9 wide receiver. That's. Well, I think he was a star dev. I don't think he was a superstar. But. All right. Good start. All right, so we're getting our second season, even though it's technically our first full rebuild year. I'd like to see if we can win it within five, including what we just went through. But if we have to go to overtime and take it to a sixth season, so it gives us five full rebuild years, we will do that. Even though I, by that time, DeVito's going to be regressing. It's fine. We're dealing with it. Uh, we got two new stars at guard. The O-line suddenly looks a little more upsidey, which is good. That's about all we could do because there was no big free agencies to sign at wide receiver, any pass catcher or anything like that. So... Just bide our time there. Kind of <laughs> ride out Daniel Jones' terrible contract. Uh, we got Slayton. We got Hodgins. We got Wandale Robinson and Jalen Hyatt uh, and Darren Waller. Hopefully that's enough for DeVito, who after a somewhat decent training camp, he's now base rating of a 60 with our OC up to a 63. A lot of work to be done. Just, you know, hand the football off to Saquon and have more touchdowns and interceptions. That is my goal here for this season. And then we point of the season, things are rough. Thing, there's no if and this is definitely going to be a lot harder than <laughs> we pretty much had immediate success with Josh Dobbs. And like just, I mean, DeVito's just not getting XP. Like every time I check this, like with Josh Dobbs, it was like every two, three weeks, he'd have one more skill point we could spend. It's like every five to six weeks for DeVito as we are one and seven, which kind of sucks. Contracts. Um... Uh, I don't want to invest on the defense too much in this rebuild. So anytime we have a player like a Nojulari, it has a dev trait, still some upside. I'd like to keep him in the room. He's really the only guy. Pick up the fifth-year options on Neil and Thibodeau. So at least not a lot of in-house money is going to be spent, which gives us more to spend on the open market, which we're going to need to get in S2. We're going to get some ballers here at wide receiver to help out DeVito. All right, at the end of year two, three wins. We might need to uh, change the play change the playbook up here. All right, let's do that right now. What what's the best? Do we take Dallas? It's just not going to work. There's, there's a certain point of just running into the wall. I don't I don't and plus that's not even a good scheme. It's not even our best one. We need a vertical zone run. 
is the the best scheme to it. Does any what's where's vertical zone? Green Bay. Like, is there a meta vertical zone that maybe that'll be like the thing? If it, if it happens to be like a really good playbook, Minnesota's playbook pretty good. Zone. Vertical zone, West Coast. I hear West Coast. I assume that's vertical. San Francisco's there. Cincinnati. What do we got? Multiple zone run now. Uh, Tampa Bay. No, not anymore. Anyways, used to want that. Power run West Coast for Kansas City. Dallas is kind of what we want. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I don't feel bad about it, man. We're trying to salvage this. Our backs are against the wall. And I didn't go Kansas City. And we just watched this Dallas put up 48. So we are hiring Mike McCarthy's son, Mick McCarthy, to be an uh, offensive assistant. Because I'm probably going to guess DeVito did not have more touchdowns and interceptions this year. Yep, yeah, we, need, we need more help. We need a little bit more favorable playbook there. Saquon didn't have a brutal year. Again, receiving numbers, humble. To put it, uh, to phrase it a little bit uh, positively, sacks weren't great. I'm not really too concerned about the defense. I'm concerned about Tommy Cutlets, who right now, if we get like the morale off, his ceiling right now is 68. Not bad. I can work with a 68. What a shocker, the Kansas City Chiefs end up winning the Super Bowl here in year two. Coach of the year went to Mike McCarthy, so I'm glad we poached a little bit out of that coaching tree there. Um... I would love a nice little DeVito upgrade to sneak in here at the end of the season, which is a little difficult. I guess we also need to look at dev traits on the rare case that somebody went up a dev trait. My expectations are probably not. Maybe on the defense, we got a good roll. But on the offensive side, we got, oh no, Saquon lost his X Factor, which is absolutely brutal. Ooh, Callaway, superstar lineman. Okay, note that note to self, because if you guys use the start today, you start like week 10, this draft class is universal. It's every draft class if you use that starting point. You need a superstar lineman, get Callaway, who I think was the highest projected right guard. Burbank with a star offensive line. Looks like it's going at least in the right direction. Defensively, uh, Isaiah Simmons made the jump from star up to a superstar, which is pretty cool. Everyone else's dev traits remain firmly where they're supposed to be. All right, so for free agency here, we had Ojulari hit the open market. I didn't want to franchise tag him at 25. Uh, he was still interested in joining us, so we got him to sign on the dotted line. Outside of that, though, man, not a good free agency spot for us. We need wide receiver help long-term, not necessarily win now. Rondell Moore is there, but, like, normal dev, and you're not with our offense unless it's, you know, that much better with the change to the Dallas playbook, which it might. Um, I don't want to be chasing dev tricks on top of paying a lot of money. And the O-line, I'm pretty happy with where our offensive line is right now. So, I mean, all eyes right now goes towards the draft and our two first-round picks, where hopefully there's some wideouts or a stud, because we're going to have a very high pick. All right, let's go to the draft. We have good picks. It actually worked out. The team that we traded to was the Browns. They have the number one pick somehow, and we have the number two pick. Browns lost four in a row, same with the Cardinals. Could have fluctuated there a little bit, but we somehow lucked into... I mean, there also was, that was a reason why I wanted to target the Browns uh, when we had the offers come in for last year's first round pick. Because, like, you know, not necessarily the strongest team. So we have pick one and two in this draft. And there are, spoiler, two good wide receivers. They literally look like carbon copies of one another. The other thing that helps is, like, there's not that other guy, right? I mean, obviously we needed a quarterback. There's a couple interesting ones, especially this strong arm quarterback out of Wyoming. So, like, that's probably built like somebody. But for the wideouts here, there's two guys that look pretty much the same S-tier deep threat player. And we have Nicholas Culver, who has elite acceleration. Top, you know, all the stats there are pretty much in line. We also have a little bit later, Jonathan Reynolds out of Oklahoma. Another deep threat who has, you know... Very similar stats, athletic profile, very similar, even a little bit faster, elite speed, elite acceleration. Uh, I wish I did do my due, due diligence a little more on the tight ends because this Paul Schaefer guy looks like he could be good. Uh, I did scout one of these guys late. This guy, Daryl Orchard, because he had double A's. 
Because we need to retool the entire skill position spots, not name Saquon Barkley. Um, I, I think we just trust the athletes here. Because if, I mean, that's what we need. I could probably find a better player. I'm not going to say that this guy here is the best player in the draft, but he's the best player in the draft for us. I'm going to go back and back. We're going two wideouts. Nicholas Culver up first. 98 acceleration, 94 change of direction, 95 speed. Welcome to the Giants. You are our new wide receiver one. And with our second pick in the first round. See, the only thing that's a bummer is that like they're not one of these 6'5 guys with all A's, right? Generational type players. But these are speedsters who could be superstar, could be high 70 star. Maybe Reynolds might be the better of the two. 98 acceleration, 94 agility, 97 speed. Help me help Tommy Collins, please. Grab this tight end too. Paul Schaefer, let's keep rolling. Keep rolling here. Might be able to get some cap relief moving on from Darren Waller. Paul Schaefer, third hidden dev receiver added to the Giants. I think the offense now is pretty complete. We'll grab another 3-4 defensive end. Not bad. Hidden dev. Daryl McKee out of Michigan. So we'll see him on the draft. I had to throw a prediction. I'm going to say 78 first wide receiver, 77 second wide receiver, 75 tight end. All hidden devs. That is 78, 77, 75. 78, 77, 75. 77, 77, 75. Good enough for me. Good enough. The tackle with a 70, not bad. The rest of the draft just simmed it out. Didn't like the look of it. But there we go, man. If, if Tommy DeVito's going to be a guy, three hidden devs, give me one of these guys. At least a superstar. All right, so here's a look at how we're going to line everything up here on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, we're going to go Schaefer over Waller. Just usher in the new era. DeVito is now a base 67 after going through training camp with the OC, bringing him up to a 70. So it's not brutal, but he is 27. So the XP is going to be difficult to earn. Saquon's no longer an X-Factor. We're going to have Hodgins. We're actually going to make Culver our wide receiver one. Hodgins will be wide receiver two and put Reynolds in the slot. So that ideally these are going to be our top two passing targets with a little bit of our tight end mixed in. And a whole lot of Saquon Barkley. But obviously with the switch to the Dallas Cowboys playbook, I'm hoping that at minimum we can get these touchdown positive season. More touchdowns than interceptions here for DeVito. As far as the defense, uh, we're working on it. Definitely working on it here, work in progress, but optimistic that they're going to be, honestly, they're probably going to be a liability this year, but hopefully they, you know, they can win us a couple games here or there as we get into year three of the Tommy DeVito Giants rebuild. The point of year three, two and four is not bad, right? It's not 0 oh and 6, which we very easily could be. Got a big matchup here against Dallas. We have set, uh, not a lot of salary cap, which is a bummer, but there's literally no one here that we need to re-sign. And the only piece of business is picking up the option here for Deontay Banks. And we just get one more offseason closer to getting Daniel Jones' contract off the books. Look at this! Cowboys playbook! I mean, we did not super cheesy. We get seven wins, which is still going into year four of a five-slash-maybe six-year rebuild here. But look at the passing offense. That's what we need. We need Cutlets slinging the goddamn rock. Week 18 gets player of the week. For, this is what we needed, right? This is what we need. This is the adjustment that we needed. I'm glad that it's not like completely ridiculous. I bet he didn't play like an MVP candidate or anything like that. But pretty damn happy here. And uh, as you can tell, we definitely just bulk him here the last uh, bit of the season. We have Jonathan Reynolds, who... What's this dev trade? Show me your dev trade. It's got to be unlocked by now. He was our slot wide receiver this year. So he ends the season, his rookie campaign, as in 81 overall with a superstar dev. Love to see that. Culver, another player here with a dev. Come on, man. He's two players. We got two players in one. Is he haunted by somebody? Who's, who's haunted? Is that Keith Taylor? But Culver, the number one pick, superstar. So we got two superstars, first and second pick in the draft. Uh, where's that tight end? On top of the fact that last year our first pick was a superstar offensive lineman was pretty badass. Paul Schaefer with a chance to make it the hat trick of superstar players. He was a hell of a tight end prospect. Double A's when we drafted him. Combine wasn't too bad. And for a hit it up tight end, he is, I mean, a star. You know, we're not going to get too greedy, I guess, when it comes to, I will definitely take two superstar wide receivers now 80 plus as weapons for a pretty decent passing offense anyways. Uh, take a look at DeVito. 
As we close out year three, look at that. That's what we need. 4,200 yards, 30. And we're just seeing firsthand. This is not only me trying to salvage a very difficult rebuild. But this is also firsthand the biggest issue with franchise mode. Is that I went out and got two superstar wide receivers in the draft. First and second picks. Excessive. Very unrealistic for most franchise modes. But the biggest thing that I did, the biggest impact to my offense, was just ticking over to the Dallas Cowboys playbook. That is not right. That is not how the foundation of Madden should be. Both of our rookies go over 1,000. So one of these guys is going to get Rookie of the Year, likely an X-Factor, which will be badass. Defensively, Akerke and Simmons tackle machines. Our sacks are average. Thibodeau leading the team with seven. Isaiah Simmons, three picks. He's been good moving him back to safety. Yearly awards, MVP. We got DeVito, top 10. First year in this legendary Cowboys offense. We got Offensive Rookie of the Year going to Jonathan Reynolds, the number two overall pick. That's a nice little in-house battle that these guys are going to have for the remainder of their careers. But Reynolds, we're going to be optimistic that he can go up to a superstar dev. Tommy DeVito, quarterback of the year. You know, hey, what am I, you know, what are we doing here? Do you want me to make you sit through 45 minutes of me just not doing anything with the, with the, uh, you know, sticking with the Giants playbook? At best, we start winning because Saquon Barkley gets like 2,400 yards rushing a year. No, we're going to try and do our best without using the Kansas City Chiefs. That is the number one cheat code. Even Dallas is still not the Chiefs level of cheese, but it's pretty damn good. And I'm very optimistic about this team now going into year four of this rebuild. And the Raiders defeat the Eagles in the Super Bowl. This is also like one of those things where it's like, can we pass it off? Like the fact that we just got two superstar wide receivers. That's why Danny DeVito, uh, Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito is, um, oh, we didn't get the X Factor though. We did not get, damn. But did we get star on DeVito? That is the question. Because I think he, especially if we're getting quarterback of the year as a normal dev, there is a shot. He is a star dev. Let's see what we got here. Two superstars at wide out. He, yeah, there we go. Star dev. Hell yeah. Plus seven. Haven't seen boosts like that to, since we did the rebuild in Minnesota with Josh Dobbs. But we got our two superstar wide receivers. And uh, DeVito threw for more touchdowns, threw for a lot more touchdowns and interceptions. God bless the Dallas Cowboys being comically good. God bless them this time. I'm not going to say a bad word about it. I sneak the peeker on the defense. Isaiah Simmons up to an X Factor, Karaki up to a superstar, and McKee, who we drafted this year as a D tackle. There's no dev trade. So we drafted three superstar dev players in that draft the two wide receivers and the DN McKee. Hell yeah. And then before that, McCalloway. So we have drafted four superstar players in this rebuild to help Tommy Cutlins. We get to another offseason. Can we get rid of Daniel Jones' contract? It's still brutal. Oh, no. We might just have to deal with this. This is, this is in terms of fairness, if you view any bit of cheese, like, oh, my God, he went Cowboys playbook. This is the counteract to that in terms of competitiveness, in terms of cheesiness. Yes, I might have got a better playbook, but I'm still having this absolute cancer pariah of salary cap hell attached to this challenge. I can't do anything. Like, that's so much money. I could say I could sign three freaking superstars for this money that Daniel Jones is holding up right now in the books. I'm sure glad that we've been drafting well because this is another free agency period where, you know what, I'm not going to say it's a bad class because there's Trevor Lawrence. And that is a hell of a role, especially if you're in a normal... If we're in a regular rebuild and we're looking like five years... We're with DeVito, a little worried. Trevor Lawrence, that is a absolute blessing to have in your free agency in a potential rebuild. So I'm not going to be, you know, too upset. But for the, the state of our squad, um, there's not much, which is unfortunate because I'm willing. But, you know, the worst thing that can happen is we roll over that salary cap and we you can go and be big spenders next year. All right, so going into the draft, I will show you there was a pretty fun player that I found. That we're just going to highlight here. I don't know if I'm going to draft him. I might. I was like, all right, pretty nice wideouts here across the board. I, I wouldn't rule out getting another wide receiver, especially after just hitting on two superstars. But look at this guy down here. Derek Ball. That could just be a fun pick. Second round. 6'8", 230 out of Michigan. And he ran a 4'5". And he's top broad jump, top vert. So he's going to be one of these guys that's 6'8", with like 99 jumping. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. Look at that in the second round. I also, you know, I still think 3-4 defensive end, we could always continue to chase 
uh, big time player there, and or just an edge. And I saw the double A here on Kyrie Wade out of Texas. A power, A tackle, A awareness, C block shed, B play rack, A pursuit. This guy looks pretty damn good. Combine also, maybe not S tier combine, but there's probably a reason why he's not. You know, if he had a really good combine, he would not be down here. He'd be up here as a top five projection. We also scouted a nice defensive tackle. Wow. Never mind. Look pretty good at face value. Two Cs, A power B tackle. Third, fourth round talent on Casey Dishman. I would have drafted him in the first round. <laughs> that is a good call. Good scouting. So with our first pick, uh, again, I'm, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic we'll be able to get that 6'8 wide receiver in the second round. So I'm going to go Kyrie Wade and just see if we can get some competition here with Oja Larry. As far as our pass rush is concerned, we roll the dev trade 6'6", 267. This guy looks like a big time player. We're going to be a little bit of a size queen here. We're going to go with the 6'8", Derek Ball out of Michigan. Let's go. I, I thought he was going to have 99 jumping. 93 jumping, 92 agility at 6'8", 230 is insane. All right, they're going to sneak peek at our draft recap. And Kyrie Wade, 74 hidden dev, 6'8", Ball, 72 hidden dev. rest of the draft wasn't anything special, but I do think we have two really, really nice players. One, Wade. I, pr I probably will going to give him the start over Ojolari just because I think Ojolari is like a 77 and he's been here forever. So let's hit the ground running with Wade, see if there's maybe a little bit more upside there. And Ball for shits and giggles, I might just, I might push Isaiah Hodgins and make Ball our wide receiver three. I am so annoyed that like just, I don't know. Can we just, can we just agree that it's not that I changed the playbook and that Tommy DeVito is actually playing like a monster? That's why our team has flipped the switch here and we've added superstar talent. And speaking of superstar talent... We've drafted four superstar players in this rebuild. And we need to go ahead and up the up the sheet. We got five now. Wade, first round pass rusher out of Texas, is also a superstar dev, which is surprising. I'm gonna I mean, this and the guard were surprising. I, I'm not shocked that those two wide receivers are superstar dev. They were such big time athletes. That's kind of common. You can never, you know, it's an absolute crapshoot when you get a guard, whether or not they're, they're going to even have a dev trait or not, let alone a superstar, which is a rare role. I get 20 star dev linemen for every superstar that I do get. But outstanding drafting. So we are we are doing everything we possibly can around the disadvantage, which is Tommy DeVito. And we're going we're gonna to just tap ourselves on the back and say this is all because we're rebuilding the right way and we're drafting really well and we didn't just switch the playbook, okay? Because that is why why franchise Moses is where it's at. But anyways, we are. Let's just see who wins. Dallas playbook versus Dallas offense, and the battle. Cool, awesome, hell yeah! All right, let's look at contracts here. Year four, we have 143 million dollars of salary cap, which AKA means we have Daniel Jones' contract coming off the books. So we are gonna go and do our best to keep. Our, our players here that we need. So we got one up there. Doom. We got Kayvon Atibido. Six-year pass rusher. Sure, why not? Doom, you're done. Saquon, huge part of the offense, really, until he reti retires. So he wants a little more money. It's fine. We'll be able to hammer that home. We got Bobby Akerke, who's been outstanding in the middle of this defense. We got Evan Neal, who's developing good enough. To warrant a two-year contract extension. We got Xavier McKinney looking to get his second contract of the rebuild, which is uncommon. Um, I mean, we're good there at wide out. Yeah, pay Saquon a little bit more, and we are going to be hoping and praying there is a big name or two in free agency because we're going to be able to afford him. We're going to be able to get in a bidding war with any other team in the NFL. Ooh, after two straight, we're going to break out for Tommy DeVito. Beating the Cowboys, beating the Eagles, back-to-back -back weeks. A chance to do something special here, get him up to a superstar. Pretty tough. I don't think he's seeming that good that I can assume that he's going to get 350 yards, three touchdowns against a 1-7 Jags team. There is a chance. At minimum, though, let's get our eighth win of the season. Don't lose to the one-win team. Fuck, we lose to the one-win team. We didn't put up a lot of points, so we're probably going to get a double L here with no dev trait. Yep. All right. Terrible. And then in year four, we got the playoffs, nine and eight. Hell yeah. Top five offense, number four offense in the NFL. Defense, mixed bag. Uh, definitely, you know, we've kind of ignored the defense a little bit in this rebuild. Um, and that's where we're going to go this offseason. Looking at our squad here on the offensive side, man. Everyone's firing all cylinders. 6'8 wide out. Pops with this starter. 
DeVito, almost an 80 overall, which is nice. Defensively, drafted another ex, uh, superstar player, which is big time. But as you can see, need some help with Deontay Banks at corner. That's going to be a priority for us uh, going to this offseason. But they're holding on there right now. And the offense is, with the talent that we have, kind of carrying the load a little bit. And that's what you need, man. Complimentary football. Take a look at and look at. <laughs> this is because we put talent around him, okay? Third in yards, 4,300 yards, 31 touchdowns, 11 picks. I mean, for what it's worth, though, not necessarily the same numbers that we were getting uh, with uh, Josh Dobbs and the Vikings, but still pretty damn good. Saquon went nuclear, 1,400 yards, 23 touchdowns, 14 and 9 for Culver, 1,008 for Reynolds. Uh, just not to harp on this because this is a video about Tommy DeVito and the magic that's Tommy DeVito. But, like, this is an unreasonable, right? I got two young, almost 90 overall, second-year superstar wide receivers. Logic would state that's what these guys should do, right? But if I switch this to, say, the Giants' base playbook, these guys aren't sniffing these numbers, right? Just the whole elimination of player ratings meaning anything, coming down to scheme. You know, this is firsthand. Like, literally, if I just had Giants' playbook, if I literally went into a menu... And hit over on a little screen, a little search bar, and move this to a different words. From Cowboys to Giants, these numbers wouldn't happen. Again, number one thing that needs to get fixed for next year's man. Number one. And if you don't think that's true, you're an idiot. With all due respect. you are an, There's not one other thing, in as much as I am arguably in this community the biggest advocate for more customization, more relocation, bringing custom team, create a team. Bring in more trades, AI trades. Number one across the freaking board, even ahead of like crossplay and stuff like that, is get off the fucking playbooks in franchise mode. Anyways, end rant, back to it. Really happy with the numbers. Sacks still kind of suck. What are we, a 3 4 team? Of course we are, so sacks just don't exist. Quickly go to the awards here. Lamar Jackson, MVP. Wow. Nope. No DeVito. That's that's surprising. Offensive player of the year goes to Saquon Barkley. Hell freaking yeah. Defensive player of the year, Micah Parsons. Offensive rookie of the year. Oh, ball runner up. That would have been cool to get him. Potentially a superstar dev. Uh, lost out to the number one projected, top five projected overall talent wide receiver, Harrington, who went to the Rams. There we go. DeVito just outside the top five for top quarterback. Saquon wins that one. Awesome. A lot of Cowboys here is what it is. Can we go on a run? DeVito, year four of the rebuild, playing the best football of his career. We're going up against kind of another another good sim team here in Atlanta Falcons. Sub-500 playoff squad, so happy that we can handle business here. 35-14 in a matchup where Isaiah Simmons revived his career at safety. Two picks, big-time player for us, obviously now developing as an X-Factor. Probably, I think we're playing the Cowboys, was it? Oh, Seahawks week. Seattle. Okay. What are they looking like? Whoa, okay. Number one points per game, top six offense. Defense kind of falls off a little bit like ours. Interesting. We'll spend our upgrade here to give us the best shot that we can. Saquon Barkley, even though he is starting to face some regression. You saw the SIB numbers. 23 touchdowns are ridiculous. Let's go, man. Against Seattle, a chance for the NFC Championship game on the line. And we barely win by the skin of our tees. 21-13, setting up an all-NFC East Championship Against the one seed Eagles. And what do we have in this one, man? Oh, look at that. Three tuds. Tommy DeVito to one pick. I mean, the turnover kind of sucks. Saquon did his thing. Reynolds with a tuddy. Culver shaped that same draft class right there. All impact playmakers. Defensively, no sacks, no picks. It's kind of in the state of the defense here. But with the Super Bowl on the line, year four. Philly, number one offense in the NFL. Number 15 defense. In the NFL, and just out of curiosity, I don't think. I hope to be proven wrong. I have not seen A.J. Brown go over 1,000 yards in the sim here. Even though he's top three wide receiver in the NFL right now. Just out of curiosity. Did he go over 1,000? Has A.J. Brown at any point in this rebuild? Gonna, this just goes back. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to spin myself back into. Look at this, man. I'm not going to spin myself back into a complaint about the playbooks. A.J. Brown in real life, 1,400 yards, 1,500 yards. A.J. Brown, once it comes on the playbook in the sim, 700 yards, 800 yards, 900 yards. Is 
it can't be that hard. It, it can't be that hard to fucking click on a keyboard here and make it... I don't know. Maybe it is. I, I feel like it's not. You know why? Because God, I'm almost certain that PC mods, Sabo's mod franchise, all these different mods, which I'm definitely going to utilize at some point right now. Mods are kind of broken. I'm pretty sure they fixed it and made it so the playbooks don't mean everything. And if you can tell me some fucking guy in his basement... All due respect, because he's a legend and what these guys, what all the modders have done. But they are just people in their fucking basement. Can fix franchise mode. Trillion dollar company can't. Okay. Alright, Super Bowl on the line. <laughs> we are in the Super Bowl. Hell yeah! 42-35, Tommy DeVito beats the Eagles. We don't have to play the Chiefs, which is gigantic. Look at that. We got 21 points allowed. So that's garbage time. We dominate this game. Tommy DeVito, three touchdowns, no picks, out duels, Jalen Hurts. Hell yes, yeah. Saquon was a monster. Culver, two touchdowns. Did our defense do something? Still no sacks, no picks. Gotta love a 3-4 sim defense. But we have, in year four, punched our ticket to a Super Bowl against the Chargers. What are the Chargers looking like? They got Justin Herbert. They're a ch perennial choke artist team. They have the 14th ranked offense. How are they here? This needs to be a win. An absolute win for the fellas. Let's spend our upgrades here. Let's spin from this into looking at our roster. Do we have any nice little dev traits? And then we're going to hop in on the sticks and see if we can get this Super Bowl over the line right now. In terms of expecting dev traits, maybe our wide receivers at the X Factor, they've been putting up big numbers. Devi no. No one goes. We got Schaefer goes from star to superstar. Tommy DeVito goes from star up to a superstar. Obviously, we got gigantic boost. 75, he's come a long way. He started as a 57 normal. God damn, man, I'm proud of that guy. Proud of this, proud of that guy. Uh, Dex Lawrence lost his dev trade, but we gained a superstar on Kayvon Thibodeau. I don't know, I guess, kind of push. It's even, all things equal. Let's go win this goddamn Super Bowl. Let's go create... One of the best stories in the history of the NFL. We're at Hard Rock Stadium. Perfect. Because, you know, DeVito's rock hard. Perfect. They work. It's the yin to the yang. Opening drive. We're going to give ourselves three opportunities to hop in, as we always do. First touchdown of the game goes to the Chargers. Our offense, that's been firing on all cylinders. Not playing particularly well. So we're going to come in here. Now, I'm a little worried. Usually we can hit the shot plate, but our quarterback has like 87 throw power. So, not the best to utilize the speed of Reynolds and Culver. However, much like Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy kind of has a noodle arm. And you just got to find a way to get these guys out in space. Not just send our 6'8 guy on a shot play. Come on, man. Come on, what we got? Jalen Rager, 6'8", Jalen Rager out there. Uh, I guess mesh spot. They press us. They did not press us. Still like him, though. 99 speed on the outside. Pretty Tyreek Hill. What about DeVito? DeVito, dual threat. Oh! Go oh, the block by Saquon! Hell yeah! What do we got here? Who's in the middle? Reynolds. That's a lot of speed. That was a dumb throw. Not a good throw. Luckily, no one really on the Chargers there to make a play on it. Let's go slants. Slant cheese, 10 yards to go. Forbidden playbook for the Philadelphia Eagles. They just can't run slants. Boom, got him. Oh, hold on to it. Got smashed. Don't matter. Pull back. Within one, extra point pending. We are going into halftime tied. I think there's another time to cash in our second of three available cash-ins. Get a touchdown here. Get a little bit of a lead. We got Culver Schaefer, tight end, 6'8". Set him down. Play action doesn't always work. Oh, my God. Look at the tight end. Wide open. I don't know who that is. Murray. Kenneth Murray. Don't think he's particularly good in coverage. More of a... Of a run stuffer guy. All right, that is number. Whoop, that is number two. 
Can you finish off the drive for me? Yes, they can. 17 on the board. Another red zone opportunity. Get another touchdown. Up 14. Get the fourth down turn. Oh, yeah, man. Italian noises. There's not a lot of Italians in Cannes. I'm going to be honest. Unless you're in Montreal. Not a lot of Italians. A couple of pizza shops, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's one of those things. I, I feel like that's a staple of American cultures. It, Get a lot of Italians everywhere. Not something I can I can say outside of you know I've been to Philly a couple times, but uh, embracing the Devito ness is exactly what happened here, and it's nothing to do with the Cowboys playbook. It's it's all Tommy Devito out dueling Justin Herbert. Year four of a five year rebuild, another Super Bowl ring for the New York Giants. Oh yeah, look at that guy. That guy's drugged out of his mind. That guy's on pills. That's just so outrageous thing to say. Hell yeah, look at that right there. Number 15, Tommy DeVito hoisting the Super Bowl. Wow, Dable's beard all messed up. Classic. Uh, yeah, let's go another year, man. Sometimes I'd cut it short, but what if we could... You know what's better than winning one Super Bowl with Tommy DeVito? Winning two Super Bowls with Tommy DeVito. Who got the MVP? Do we give him the MVP as well? Yeah, yeah, we do. Three touchdowns, no turnovers. Hell yeah, we do. MVP, Super Bowl champion. Over free agency, Tyreek Hill. I'm good with their offense, man. I don't want to upset the balance of everything that we built offensively. However, our corners are really bad, so we are coming with a gigantic offer to try to get Marlon Humphrey. And that's actually a shocking that I did not get him. I offered... Right now, he signed for a one-year... I don't, I don't even want to tell you what I offered him. It was literally like absurd. He signed for a one-year $15 million deal with the Texans. I offered him three years, probably 60. Like 15 million and 12 million. So whatever that is, times three. Brutal! Our corners are so bad, though. Even going for a secondary option, Teron Johnson, he is going to be a nice starter for us. Luckily, we can hopefully take advantage of what is usually a very strong cornerback-generated draft class. Johnson in the nickel. Get someone else on the outside to pair with Deontay Banks. A good rule of corners. Top five projected pick here. DJ Michaels out of Southern Miss. A catching A zone B man. Looks pretty good. I think this is the guy that we want though. Macklin. A press, A zone, A catching C man. Pretty good combine. Where do I need to trade up to get Macklin? Because I don't really want to trade up within the top five. Um, let's see the last mock draft. That's who I'm going to trade up with. I want that pick. I want Macklin. So he is going... Nine. Okay. So for pick nine, the Broncos want a lot of draft. I don't care. End the rebuild. There you go. Have all your picks. Let me get this beautiful corner that is going to start for us and is going to feature in a secondary that is going to go on and win back-to-back -back Super Bowls on the back of Tommy DeVito. So pick nine. Come on. Garrett, go do it. Mr. Macklin. Where you at? Jerry Macklin. Sounds fake. That sounds 100% like an alias. Welcome to New York. And Mr. Macklin comes in. Oh, yeah. 78. That is day one starter material. A little worried, too, about the combine. But really shouldn't have been. Look at that. 93 speed with the boost of our scheme. 94 acceleration. 90 jumping. 90 agility. 80 zone out the box. Good to go. That's good. So here we go. Defending Super Bowl champion New York Giants. This is how we're running it back. DeVito, Barkley, Culver, Reynolds, Schaefer. And an offensive line that is pretty damn good. Maybe not elite, but good. Defensively, we added two new cornerbacks. Macklin in the first round, which cost us. I didn't even look what the conversation was. A lot of picks. Teron Johnson, lone free agency signing. Really wish I was Marlon Humphrey, but it is what it is. We're running it back, man. We're running it back. And just because we got the house money of a Super Bowl, I want to do something here just to further add to, call it an experiment. We've seen for two years what the only scheme change it did was moving this to Dal and McCarthy. Whatever those words mean jumbled together. What happens if we go back here? We know what we got. We've been getting Saquon, 79 yards, 23 touchdowns. Tommy DeVito playing like a top 10 quarterback, top 10 MVP candidate. 2,000 yard receivers. Back-to-back -back years. Let's go back to New York Giant Brian Dable for year five and see if we can do this the right way. All right, we went 10-7. and seven. 
Uh, offensively, okay. When we went 10 and 7, so. Offensively. Okay, so uh, offensively, not good. Not nearly as good of a, of a quarterback season. Okay, we have we lost 12 rushing touchdowns for Saquon Bucky. Now he is getting older. Oh, we have no 1,000-yard receivers. Okay. Our tight end barely got involved. He, he's been getting like 700 yards. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Why did it do that? We've just had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, everybody. I hope no one from EA is watching this. And I already, you know... Ugh. No, I'm preaching to the choir, right? This is not a demonstration because people have been doubting what I've been ranting about, you know? It's just one of those, every now and again, you got to realize firsthand, maybe that's the, maybe that's what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to just get whatever section of the vocal Madden franchise community watches my content, consumes my content. If we can get all on the same page, that playbook dependence in the sim is the biggest issue hampering franchise mode. Maybe that, that's my goal. That's what I want to try to achieve out of this. So after five years, take a look at the stats. Tommy DeVito, 16, almost 17,000 passing yards, 113 touchdowns, do 61 picks. Again, you know, fairly realistic, let's be honest. For a guy like this to go off the way he has, starting as a 57, normal, 25-year-old rookie quarterback, and with, obviously, gigantic boost to 77 superstar. That's... You know, again, he didn't come in X Factor, didn't come up into a 90s. We didn't get him to grow 30 points overall or anything like that. Everything's just on default XP sliders and stuff. But as good as you can expect. Saquon crushing it, 11,000 yards, 91 touchdowns, 38 and 21 for Culver, 3,000, 22 for Saquon, almost 3,000 and 26 for Jonathan Reynolds. Schaefer was solid. We got ball down there as well. Bobby Akerke, 1,000 on the dot, 38 sacks. Dexter Lawrence, 35 for Kayvon and Thibodeau. Pretty decent numbers there across the board. Happy with it. And at least we made the playoffs here in year five with an opportunity to run it back. Back-to-back -back Super Bowls, even though we no longer have uh, the Dow, Dow M. McCarthy playbook. But we're going on a run, man. 31-24. We defeat the Seattle Seahawks in the division round. I guess he 10-7. Detroit Lions. That's where it ends, huh? I don't even want to say, like, oh, did we at least play well? Only 14 points offensively. Probably didn't play particularly well. One touchdown, one pick for Mr. DeVito. He did have a rushing touchdown. Shout out to him. 6'8". Very tough to cover. Defensively. Holy shit, look at those sacks. Those are uncharacteristic 3-4 sim sack numbers. But for a little fun video, even I went into this morning being like, I want it. let's go. It's time to rebuild the, the, the Bears. I've had more than enough feedback that people want me to move on. From Justin Fields and trade him somewhere. I don't even know what kind of picks. Can I still get a first rounder in return for Justin Fields? We'll find out. But I was like, the nut, I just loaded that up. And I was like, I just, I want to play Danny. I want to play with DeVito. And on top of that, like, I don't want to do a realistic rebuild with DeVito. Because let's be honest, it's a meme at this point. You're not, not, not going to really, you know, with, uh, I'm not, you don't change the playbooks in a realistic rebuild. So if we would have stuck on the Giants playbook this whole time. And we, we did a realistic approach. We, this wouldn't have happened. We would have just been spinning our tires in the mud the whole time. But hell, yeah, man, we accomplished something. We built a hell of a team. Drafted incredibly well. Couldn't have gone any better. So I hope you guys did enjoy. If it is your first time, stop by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your voice before saying peace out. Love ya. Tomorrow, the plan right now is tomorrow, Cardinals preseason week one. Saturday, Chicago Bears realistic rebuild. Then Sunday, we'll... Likely just have my rant about hopefully not another loss for the Philadelphia Eagles against Seattle. So until that time, it's your boy C4 saying peace. I love you. Have a good one.